Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Every time. We tried really hard and the Wi-Fi didn't want to work for us, but I'm so excited. We're back here again, but this time we're in New Jersey. We are in New Jersey, and last time we were here, we were making an announcement about our engagement. And I am so excited. I'm still engaged. Yep, you're definitely still engaged. <laughs> yes, and last time we had a great discussion in Detroit, which was amazing. I really enjoyed that. You know, it was Detroit, so we had, you know, live, we had music and Bells. pictures and, and slides. We're in Jersey, and um, we have us. Raw, this is the, this is the raw and uncut version. No. <laughs> and it's beautiful. It it's beautiful. great. It's just straight to us. It's natural. Yeah, so how was your day, man? I got? Well, my day was outstanding. Um, I had, uh, what did you cook for dinner? I cooked this, <laughs> um... Pasta with chicken and broccoli and You're being technical. Yes. What did you cook me for dinner? Well, he had um cheese stick. He had Philly cheese stick. Pagano's. <laughs> Philly. Shout out to Dad, thank you. That's it. Yeah, I love you, Daryl. Yes, yes. And how was it? It was outstanding. It doesn't really taste like like cheese stick, this is well, maybe I just don't have a great relationship with cheese stick, but it, it's chopped up really well for the purpose of um, uh, trying to consume it. Um, the word I'm looking for digestion, so uh, it's chopped up really well in small little pieces, and it's like a barbecue flavor to it. It's good little cheese connected to it. Um, on a it's, it's not like uh Sound like coming to America, you know, on a sesame seed um, <laughs> bun. You know, I, I started originally on fries. Y'all know coming to America, but in a few years I'd be on grill, then a sesame, and that's when the big books start rolling in. Yes. Yeah, chicken in Detroit, but here in Jersey, right next to Philly. So you get the good old oh, yeah. Philly cheesesteak. Yes, we was living it up today. So uh, Big I, he ate a bunch of it uh, today. He ate uh, all my little Philly cheesesteaks, so... It was great. And then she made my favorite, which I'm going to partake in just a few minutes. We're not going to be on uh, too long. Um, she makes these wonderful homemade uh, smoothies that are just off uh, the chain. I love kiwi. Uh, orange juice is like my favorite juice on the whole wide world. Uh, she puts a lot of other uh, fruits in there, um, and I just drink them into times. Um Get better. So we got smoothies this this go around, and I'm excited about it. So we're just gonna come on just for a few moments and just talk to you about uh, some of our suggestions. Again, we got a suggestion for you uh, tonight, and then we're gonna keep it moving. Yes. So I think this is funny. Okay. I think this is funny. Let's go. <laughs> Y'all gonna rate and, and find out whether or not this is yes, funny. Yes, so we have to say Jersey or Detroit better. It's not a competition because you know the two are becoming one, but mm -hmm. we have to say you know which one's better. But anyway, um, which one was I'm just saying because we was in Detroit last time and we did all of the fancy stuff, and now we're in De and we're in New Jersey and we're doing the easy o stuff. Only you are thinking about which ones, but I'm just happy to be. Here. Anywho, so yes, I, for anybody who's ever seen The Chosen, we are, um, I'm a huge, huge Chosen fan, and I finally got the man of God to watch the season finale of uh, season three, which was absolutely amazing. Anybody who watched The Chosen have ever seen it. This season was amazing. It was ridiculous. If you haven't seen it, you have to see it. And... It's been what months you since to... you seen yeah. since you ended it. You just like to end seasons. Yep. And for those of you who are watching, um, she did. She's not that she got me to watch the chosen. Let's take a step back. So the chosen is a show about the gospels, which is in the Bible. Um, for those of you who are listening, uh, it's a spiritual. A show about the life of Jesus and his disciples. She knew nothing about this show called uh, The Chosen. I picked up on this show four or five years ago, and I started watching it 
uh, and just binged it like crazy. And then I pitched it to her. She started watching it and it went from there. So it's not that she got me to watch the show. I put her on to the show and this is the last two episodes of season three. So I'm just going back to what I already love. That's true. But once it became my favorite show, I kind of... Like, I have the t-shirt, the hoodie, I'm about to get the cup, mm -hmm. and I'm yeah. like a real fan. Question. Who has bought you some of these items? <laughs> who, who bought you these items? Who, who bought you your first chosen item? That would be you. That would be me. So, uh, she says her favorite show, and like, she's invested. No, you're you're invested with the, with the money I paid for the, to buy the shirts. You enjoyed the show, but yeah, I, I'm invested as well. So, that's true. Yeah, but that's a good thing. It's a good thing when something is your show, and then she took it on. So she'll tell you a little bit more about how she took the show on, and it took a life of its own. They did a chosen, basically, conference 2022 or something like that. Yes. Now, um, one of the main reasons why I love The Chosen is because I feel like um, a lot of, unfortunately, Christian content makes Jesus look weak and um rigid and they make the bible very stagnant oh my goodness hi heidi hi my friends from florida i'm so excited up. you're on um so yeah if you haven't seen the chosen it's absolutely amazing it is the best rendi rendition of jesus and the disciples i've absolutely ever seen because jesus is a real person he is a real person and he laughs, he makes jokes, he builds relationships, he has real feelings and emotions and he is strong but yet he is supportive. The disciples have real shortcomings and fallings and mm -hmm. thank you so much. And <laughs> I love that piece because you watch some movies about Jesus in the Bible and it's just, it's non-relatable. You can't, but I can see my life in the scriptures, mm -hmm. in the Bible, but I can also see it in their rediction of the scripture, which I very much appreciate it. And we literally had we did uh, Bible studies of The Chosen where we would watch an episode and then we would talk about it because I love movies, TV shows, songs, and I love to talk about it. I feel like we can always bring it's a better way to talk about lives mm. and situations when you can bring it up in a story or a movie or something. I think for me, watching her facilitate um, one of The Chosen sessions. So what they do is uh, they bring the saints in. They do a big. They do a big over here. So. I think I've, I've done, I don't know if I did the East, but I definitely, I may have done the East and the West, but I definitely did one when they did a session at the West. So what they do is they come in, uh, they, you know, they fancy, they have popcorn machines, they were showing out, uh, they had the beautiful popcorn bags, uh, and then the saints get to sit, and they get to sit in the dark, in the sanctuary, uh, and watch, watch the movie, and then watch the episode, then when the episode is over, um, they kind of just put it out to everybody and let it be open. Like, what did you see? What did you get from this episode? A good Q&A or whatnot. And just, you know, watching a woman facilitate, you just be like, yeah, that one is mine right there. That's that one. That one over there, the one that's talking to her. So she did an excellent job. Um, she did an excellent job facilitating it and just energy. I think it's a, it's a, it's kind of like if your person is in a rock band and they're out here just killing it. I mean, if you got any kind of love for them, you're going to be excited because they kill them. So you, you killed it because it, it is a, it's, it's a conversation that is out of both of our passion. And I get to see you walk that out uh, in front of people. And it's impactful because it's about something that matters, eternal life and Jesus. So uh, it's just a really, it's a really good show. I think um, if I could capsize it, uh, season one is about building the team. Um, season two is about the impact, uh, of the team and season and the, and the impact of the team. And then season three, I would say is the release of the team. Uh, so yeah. it, it's the yeah. entire show is about community, uh, and relationships. And we'll talk about, um, the episodes that we watched today. Uh, I have a, I have a translation, uh, or a debrief about, these last two episodes, what do you think? No, I think we should talk about that and what you were talking about in terms of community because episode three 
to his point, but that's not the first thing I saw. Laura, oh my goodness, I love it. All Florida's coming on right now, and it blesses my whole life. Laura, have you seen The Chosen? If you haven't seen The Chosen, you would really appreciate it. They have their own app. They're on YouTube. They're on Netflix. They're, like, everywhere right now. They're on CW, I believe, on Sunday nights. And the thing that really blessed me, and I think that really helps in this season especially, is that the whole thing was about the scripture of... No, the fourth season not out, but you have to watch the third season. The third season, definitely the season finale, is the best season finale they have done yet so far. Um, but I feel like the third season, they have one scripture that they keep repeating over and over again. And it's about giving your burdens to Christ and all come all ye who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. And in this season, the Lord has been dealing with me that as it gets dark quicker and as the leaves are going into their hibernation version, that the Lord has given us all a season of rest that we have to understand where we are. Yate! Oh my goodness, my Navajo family is on. Yes, please watch The Chosen. And especially in this season, I think it's important that we don't allow our season of rest to make us depressed. That just because it's getting darker sooner, just because we have to be indoors mm -hmm. longer, that we don't allow depression to sink in, allowing it to not hinder us, but rest intentionally and rest on purpose. So, and allowing, so while you're resting, while you're inside, please watch The Chosen. And I, I really didn't think about your piece in terms of the community. I was all caught up in the individual piece of how you can take care of yourself and mm -hmm. how do you take care of your own mental health because um, uh, Eden is dealing with the loss of a child and miscarriages and that relationship and marriages and how they're dealing with it together and how they come together on that piece. And that's where I was stuck. Okay. But where you brought it in was like mm -hmm. completely like a larger scale that I wasn't even thinking about. So I think for those that are watching, when you watch The Chosen, at least for me, um, I am a Sunday school buff. One one, I love the Bible, love the scriptures, all that kind of stuff. But uh, I, I'm I'm hearing I'm hearing King James, and I'm in Matthew chapter number eight, and and in the season three of Chosen, uh, it it deals with Peter and his wife. Uh, who they call Eaton uh, or whatnot. And in one of the prior seasons, it deals with how Jesus comes into Peter's house and deals with Peter's mother-in-law who mm -hmm. was sick. Whatnot. Mm -hmm. And that, that's powerful just to read it, but to see it as something different <clears> as <throat> to say that you know God won't let you serve him and he doesn't take notice of what's going on in your house or whatnot. And that's one aspect, God looking at what's going on with you. Now, season three these episodes seven and eight uh, is a little different because it's not just, uh, it's showing the piece where um, Peter is basically having challenges uh, about how he feels uh, about what he has been going through. And I think everybody has that in their life. How do you feel about what you're going through? And when you feel like God has, God has the uh, power, but he hasn't made the decision yeah. to do it yeah. for you. So he's, they're showing his frustrations or whatnot. Uh, but with that, uh, it shows the focus on the family. So it doesn't just show Peter, it shows his wife. And what I got out of both uh, episodes was there was a community that was concerned about a husband and a wife staying together. Um, and everyone kept talking to the wife uh, about pray for your husband. And everybody kept reaching for the husband so that he could be good for his home. Yeah. Uh, or whatnot. So for me, uh, the entire the entire episode, a uh, couple episodes was just about how God uses people uh, so that you can come to terms with things and how much comfort do we receive yeah. because of the people that God deposited. So for those of you who are in Florida, um, I get a lot of comfort when I go to Disney Springs <laughs> because everybody at Disney, and I'll share this. Uh, I'm not a Disney person necessarily but when I first went to Disney 2018 or whenever I went I went on my birthday and she knew what they was gonna do she she knew I had a button on a birthday button and when I had this birthday button That's on birthday button. Uh, for Disney they uh everybody that came every time I entered a different area of the park everybody they never overlooked my button and everybody said happy birthday I felt so special because I was being acknowledged throughout the day uh, and that's just Disney so imagine what life looks like if if, if you that's were going good. through something if you were dealing with something if you were carrying something 
and people would acknowledge you throughout the day. So shout out to, to you know, shameless plug for Disney. I got I got to come see Disney Springs, buy some shoes. So we got to do something. And you know what? This is a side plug, and we're going to go back to being deep and spiritual. But um, I love Disney. <laughs> I love Disney Springs. I, I, I don't even, it's not even about the rides. I just want to go to Disney Springs, walk around. Listen. Hey, they, got, they got a person on a piano with wheels yeah. that's walking around singing. And then they got, they, we had a, they did one of the live concerts and it was a choir going yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, and then they had a rock band, people singing yeah. your favorite yeah. songs and ballads. Go to <laughs> Disney Springs. Like, not like Disney Springs. Uh, yeah. I love it's, Disney Springs. It's free. Parking is free. Um, the reason why I was going to make a joke about it was because everybody knows I'm a Disney junkie. You are. used to work at Disney for all of my Disney family. I love you. You need to let me know if the piano person is still there. It used to be a guy. I think it was a girl at one point. But the girl. fact that in his mind, he believes that... Yeah, wow. Oh, my goodness. What's your I friend? was literally Katie about to Katie ask you if they still play. You tell Katie I love her and she <laughs> encourages me when she plays the role in... Uh, P.I. is because it's just so classy. It's so it's like I want to give you motivation on wheels. Yeah, and it's a performance, and it's just this white, beautiful piano. It's just wonderful. And she just travels down the hallways, and it's a shopping area for all of those who do not know. Um, and I love it because everyone knows I'm a Disney junkie, mm -hmm. but in his mind, he believes that this is his idea. And that's why our relationship is going to be great because my junkie tendency, the things that I love, he has embraced them and called them his own. And, um, back to the chosen though, that I was just so giddy about what you were saying in terms of the community that, that they wouldn't allow them to die, mm -hmm. that we will not allow each other to die that in this season when we can be depressed and feel isolated and alone while we're watching you know shout out to hallmark and all the magical movies and comparing our lives but not to forget to allow us to reach out to the family that we do have not comparing the ones that we don't have or the relationships that we don't mm -hmm. have but reaching out to the ones that we do because if we are feeling this way then I'm sure there's someone else who's also feeling this way so as a community the Lord uses us to help sustain us something that the chief apostle said that blessed my whole life because we were talking about our relationship and how I want it, excuse me, my nose is heavy, but how I want it to work. And he was saying that it's going to work because we have a community. We have a community who mm -hmm. we hear, who we listen to. And oftentimes he was saying originally, it wasn't just a marriage between two people. It was a marriage between a community of people. And the community is what can build and keep people together. Thank you. Absolutely. And it's not a journey. It's not a competition. It's a journey. It's not a competition. And I just love how as a community, we if we love and care for each other and not allow each other to get stick to get stuck, that that's how we grow. And I just I think my thought process and your thought process is why I love you so much because a lot of times we get stuck on the individual thought process about what I'm going through and about how I feel about it and how I interpret my trauma and how I <laughs> interpret what's going on versus the community. Mm -hmm. We are our brothers and our sister's keeper. I think I think that's, that's powerful. Now, I'd be careful how I say this, but uh, my fiance, she likes to observe me um, <laughs> when I'm working uh, to a certain degree. So if I'm talking, if I'm having a conversation, uh, trying to uh, work through an issue or whatnot, uh, this is professional, professionally. Uh, yeah. She likes to see what, what kind of skills I possess to, to kind of de-escalate people and different things. Uh, of the sort, and I was having a conversation with a person that was on thirty. They were on I mean, maybe maybe a hundred. They were really on a hundred, uh, and I knew that I knew that when I had this conversation with this person, I managed teams, so I knew that I was going to be able to use this conversation and have a powerful uh, interaction with my team because this guy was going off. Long story short, uh, thirteen minutes later. Uh, he was saying, God bless you because of how he, he was dealt with. And we began to have this conversation uh, about perception, uh, perception, perceiving, yeah. perception versus perspective. 
uh, perception being how you internally, how you internalize things, your your outlook, and then perspective being putting yourself in the other person's shoes, seeing it through somebody else's uh, eyes. Now she heard the conversation that I had uh, with my team or whatnot. So kind of tie that in uh, for us and what you got out of uh, perception versus perspective and then how it all applies to what we're talking about with the chosen. Um, what really blessed my whole life about that was just how, um, I was talking about this the other day, how you say it's better to be a thermostat instead of a thermometer. And I feel like oftentimes I am, I can just speak for myself that I am too busy just responding to the temperature of the room and changing who I am based on the temperature of the room. So based on the temperature of the conversation, um, based off of the environment in the room, it's like, oh, you are getting in magical like Disney World? Oh, I'm on 10. I'm going to go with you. I got all the magical kindness energy mm -hmm. in the world. But if I'm with people who, you know, want to have an attitude and want to be extra, you know, on the other scale, it's like, oh, I can get with you there too. And... I love how you talk about instead of being a thermometer and just checking the temperature and reflecting what you see, being the thermostat in the environment and changing the temperature, mm -hmm. that you can change it. That instead of listening to how they're talking to you, but responding to what they're actually saying and mm -hmm. what they're actually might be going through and why they may be having a higher tone, why they may be um, being extra. I loved how you were able to narrow in into what was important to them and what they actually needed and not respond to how they were treating you and not respond to their energy and what they were saying, but taking care of their needs. And because they felt heard and seen, it's like they went from 100 to zero in what, 13 minutes? Mm-hmm. It's like the way they were talking, their energy and the craziness, they was going off, cursing and saying the ridiculous. And your tone never changed, your energy never changed, but brought them all the way down in seconds because they felt heard and you handled what their concern was about. And that's why I like watching you what you do. Hi, Kristen. <laughs> yeah, so we oftentimes, um, when Jesus teaches a, a principle, um, when you read Matthew chapter number uh, five, he deals with the Beatitudes. When you watch Chosen, yeah. season one, two, or three, uh, you, you will see how he expresses the B uh, attitudes. Uh, we know Matthew chapter five, uh, verse seven, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain uh, mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall be called children of God. Um, blessed are the peacemakers. That's verse nine, Matthew chapter number five. And uh, what she was talking about, uh, how you how you don't just conform. Uh, you have to be that thermostat. That's what Christ teaches. So in Chosen, we're talking about a show on Netflix uh, and all other places. Um, in this last season, if you've watched the prior seasons, he's taught them to be attitudes and all this kind of stuff. He deals with Nathaniel uh, sitting under the tree. And that's yeah. all of these interactions are in private. Yeah. Uh, in season three, now the way that he has loved them in private and been a peacemaker and didn't just uh, accept the bait. Now openly, now openly in season three, he's dealing with the Sahedra. He, he He's dealing with the... the the, the Jewish council, he's dealing with the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and they are openly attacking him. And it's so powerful, uh, before he performs the miracle of the two fish and the five loaves of bread, that he sits down. They're, they are vexed at Jesus. And he makes a decision, kind of like the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, that he doesn't respond to them in the way that they think he should. He just sits down. Yeah. And he starts talking to his community. And as he talks to his community... He, he he invites them to join the conversation that he's having with his community, opposed to trying to tell them not be angry or not be upset. I think that's really the wise thing. Uh, I talk about this all the time. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes, it's not about trying to control how other people raise their children. What conversation will you have with your child at the yeah. dinner table? What conversation will you have over the people that you have influence? So that's why we're talking about this tonight, yeah. because the impact is what happens when the community when, when another community listens to the community of him and her or the family, and if that is a good conversation, if you all know how to talk through challenges, yeah. then they will follow suit. Yeah, yeah. 
Hi, Miss Azelina Jules. I'm so excited. We love that you're the Jules. I promise like my, you, I do. My auntie's on here. I'm just, I'm so elated for all of those who, you know, don't know why we're on here. We are having these conversations <laughs> and lives, and we're going to be having services about, um, for all of those who do not know, Come on we recently got engaged. And the thing that we know is we know how to be single, but we may. Did we do the disclaimer? No, we didn't. The disclaimer, no. Uh, no matter what we're talking about, uh, we are preparing for partnership. We know nothing about marriage. Nothing. No. We can do single conference, though. Oh, single, <laughs> single conference. You want us to talk about how you can be single and how to live a single life? We can do that. Can but do that. this whole marriage thing and how do you stay together and mm -hmm. how do you... Um, we had questions. Um, so I'm, I want to jump into that um, okay. because we are having our services. For all of those who do not know, please come out. Um, we are going to be in Detroit first on December 1st. Yes, on, 26 honey. years. I saw happy anniversary and you guys are an absolutely gorgeous couple. And I wish that I could get you. We have to get you to come on. Hi, Lady T. I'm so excited to see you on here. We're just trying to explain why we're on here, and you definitely could help, and I hope that you would come out um, <laughs> in Detroit. And December 1st, we are going to have a service where it talks about, it's just dialogue and discussion that mm -hmm. we know nothing about marriage, so we want to ask people, um, like yourself, Heidi, who've been together for a while, That's good. how do you stay together? Everyone wants to talk about why you shouldn't get married because of this, that, fourth, or whatever, but there are people who are making it, Heidi being point. There are people who are not just making it, but thriving mm -hmm. it. There are these stories. I don't want them to just be fiction, but I want it to be nonfiction in my life. And how do you do that? You want to just go in there just blindly saying, you know, because we love each other, it's going to work. We don't know how to do this. <laughs> so as we prepare for partnership, we want to be able to have these conversations. So I love it. You came up with some questions that we're going mm -hmm. to ask some of the amazing men and women of God who've been together forever, who've been together for a year, all these different types who've been recently divorced. Because a lot of times you learn so much in the divorce. Oh, absolutely. Divorce teaches you something just as much as being married for 20 something years teaches you. I want to learn all of those things. And I think that's why it's important as we prepare over the next 11 months or so mm -hmm. to actually say I do, to talk to people who know about it. So, Love, what were some of the questions? I know there was one in particular that you want to make sure we ask. And also, can you please put in the comments any questions that you think that we should ask on our upcoming service in Detroit? And then we have a service coming up in Jersey in January. So please put it on your schedule. All my Jersey family, anybody can come. That's um, January 20th. 12th, both are Friday nights. So first one is in Detroit. The second one is in Jersey. So these are dates. They're easy to remember. 12-1, Detroit, 1-12, Jersey. All right, love, what was that question we were, you wanted to talk about? Well, it's a, so there's a lot of questions. So when you come out and we'll be live too. So uh, those of you who are in Jersey on January 12th, we'll, we'll be live. And when we go live, uh, we're going to be talking to multiple uh, couples, couples who are into the marketplace, couples who are into ministry, uh, couples who just like each other, uh, <laughs> couples that's who, important. yeah, that, that's very um, important. Couples who are funny, who have energy, they do music together, they do arts uh, together, and we're just gonna have conversation uh, with them. So I thought it would be uh, really nice if we could ask couples, and not just couples, uh, people, questions about uh, things that we have interest in concerning partnership, because it's Partnership is not just a marriage question. It's a life question. You're going to partner with your family. You're going to partner with your brothers and sisters. Most important in any relationship, listen to each other. Absolutely. So, um, that's a good segue. That, that's, that's a good, that's a good <laughs> segue. Um, one of my questions, it's going to be a heavy one. And Heidi, uh, to the point and put what you put in the comments, literally is to what you said, which is so perfect. It says Cheryl Hargrove, but that could be Adi or Pop-Up. Is that Adi or Pop-Up? One of them are on there, because I know pop up sometimes get on Adi's Facebook. Um, I'm sorry, we were saying the question? No, so to your point, uh, we have a question. Uh, there's 11 questions, but question number nine, uh, it starts off with in parentheses, 
And y'all let me know, are we off? I think this is this is something we're trying to, this is something that has an interest for us. So one of the things that we don't want to do, and y'all let us know if we're off or not, uh, I refuse to make you me. Uh, how do we stay away from manipulating our partners to serve our personal agendas? So as we uh, begin to you know, come together and all that kind of stuff, one of the things I don't want to do I don't want to make her me, and hopefully she don't want to make me her. So that's one of the questions. Yeah. I'll let you rephrase the question or repeat it again. And y'all let us know what y'all think about that question. Yeah, it's so important to what you were saying, Heidi, about how do you not lose you? And then if you are a dominant personality, and it's like what I believe, I believe it for a reason, and I think it's important. And how do I not allow my... Um, what I believe is important, but you may believe it's different. How do I not, how do I see you? I think that's the thing that I think is important in that question is how do I see you enough to value the you that's different than me? Because something that I say that is, um, that I love about us is that we agree on the issue. We completely agree on the issue. There's no doubt about it, but now how we fix the issue or how do we go about the issue? Mm -hmm. Oh, we completely disagree. Completely left, right, we don't agree on that. So how do we come together and remember that our base is the same? Our value systems mm -hmm. are the same. We agree on that. But how do I not make you me by making you agree on how we get there? Yep, that's what we're saying. Yep, so it's kind of like... Um, I, when it comes to parenting, so not making her me, um, her approach to Isaac going to bed when he was younger, uh, she's going to play common music. Uh, uh, if he does too much, she's going to do a countdown, three, two, one, and all those types of things. And it works. It absolutely works. I've, uh, she would start off with some reading. She has a whole process. She reads a long book. Uh, she creates an atmosphere. It's almost like a, a, a Catholic worship service. <laughs> she creates a whole atmosphere. And then after that, uh, you know, she just, she calms him, right? He gets really calm. He gets really calm. And then he goes to sleep. And that is her approach. Now, what I try to do, I try to pay attention to what works with her. Now, it can take 25, minute long, 25 minutes longer, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, this is what she needs. So my position really is just to support her process when I'm in her presence. Now, my process is <laughs> totally uh, different. I tell my boy, uh, lay down and go to bed and don't move. And then that's it. He's a baby whisperer. What can I do with that? I have a long process, but it works for me. I have to do mm -hmm. what I can. But the baby whisperer just says, boy, go to bed. What is a baby? Y'all agree with me. Tia, you agree with me, right? Okay, there's a process and things that we have to do, but he explained my process. Just, and it sounded like he was really supportive and encouraging my process and all of that. And then what he says is, he says, boy, go to bed. And the boy go to bed. He didn't have to play no music. He had to read no book. He didn't have none of that. But... You know, that is what you call the baby whisperer. Does anybody agree with me? Tia, you got to come out. Um, I don't know if you missed it. Je uh, in Jersey, 112, 630 at the East. We're going to be talking about all of this, but in person and taking real life questions. So if you have questions, I know I have questions. Dads are different, right? It's just, mm -hmm. it's not fair. Well, I don't know. I don't know if dads are, are, are different or not because I know, I know that, I know children that m dad and mom they 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 not they not hearing either one of them. So um, <laughs> no, not not all moms are created or dads created equal. Uh, but I know my my life is I say it and they do it. Uh, Boy, go to bed, and it works. Yes. So in his attempt in not making me him, um, but that part. I was about to say that part would be good if you made me into you, but it wouldn't because it hurts me. Like, I like for example, to wake Isaac up in the morning, you know, I love to kiss his face and, you know, sing to him and all those magical things. And 
Isaac whines and gives me a hard time. And when he wakes him up, it, it kind of makes me feel some type of way. He just grabs him out of the bed. He's asleep. Puts him on the floor on his feet. Said, boy, get up. Go on. And he gets up. He goes. And he mm -hmm. goes to the bathroom. And he doesn't whine. He doesn't anything. And I'm just like. I want to say, I, I want to say this to every parent that is listening to me. Your children are playing you. <laughs> Like the radio. <laughs> so these kids, these kids are playing y'all like the radio. Uh, I can, I can wake this boy up, pick him up, put his feet on the floor. He will not swivel, whine, or complain because it is in him to get up. They're playing, Heidi. They're playing you. <laughs> she is a grown right. boy. So they're playing us. So you just gotta know. You gotta know the game. And uh, yeah. And, it, he, and the thing about it that's just so sad <laughs> is that he's so true. So, like, I try to do, like, my version of being a little tougher. So, you know, I still kiss. But, you know, when he starts whining, I say, boy, you wouldn't do this to your daddy. And I make him stand up. And then it's like he reverts back to remembering what his daddy, what he does with him. I know. He's, like, in college and everything. Right, Heidi? Um, He just... As it just reverts back to what his daddy says, so it works. Hi, Pastor Glenna. We talk. He trying to get me and say that Isaac is playing me, which may be true, and I'm getting better. Thank <laughs> you. It's a Absolutely. good balance. But that's but that's what I mean. That's what support is. Though. <laughs> support is me not making you me. I'm not gonna force my practices <laughs> on you, and then your wisdom is. Whatever my practice is, I'm not going to go interfere. <laughs> I'm oh. going to go in the other room. <laughs> Pastor Glenna! When he, you know, there's some things that I know Isaac needs it. Because my prayer every day is, Lord, do not let me mess up this boy. Oh Please don't let me mess up this boy. So when his dad gets a little aggressive, yes. He does. Yes. And he gets it and he runs to me. He's like, Mom, you want to bathe me, right? Hi, hi, Mo. We we talking about you know you know daddy wisdom and all that type of stuff. And so when he is he's disciplining Isaac, there was this one time I emotionally couldn't handle it. I knew Isaac <laughs> needed it, but emotionally I could not handle it. So I left. I left the room, and then the room wasn't far enough. So I went upstairs because I could still hear him in the other room. So I just, that's me, you know, knowing mm -hmm. that I can't be you. I can't do what you do, but I value what you do. So I let you do it by yourself. Okay. Right. So, again, I feel like the, the word 300. Hi, Tim. Like, let. <laughs> like, let. like, you let me? Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I do not interfere. No, she doesn't interfere. So that's I think that's 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 the wisdom, just to understand um, the piece of the puzzle that somebody else uh, has. So the question that we're talking about tonight, and y'all let me know, um, Elder Tim, Pastor Glenna, everybody that's this in the comment section, um, is this something that is a factor in relationships? So when we come together, uh, we'll be in Jersey on January twelfth. Yes. So please and, come out. In person, and we're going to pull some of these questions um, out to you all. Uh, I refuse to make you me. So how do we stay away from uh, manipulating, <laughs> manipulating our partners to serve our personal agendas? Thank you, man of God. I appreciate it. So how do we stay away from that? Yeah. And um, also while we're in here, we really want to push these services in person because as much as I love being virtual, it's something about being in person mm -hmm. and then getting the questions and answers on the spot. We're going to have the chief apostle with us in Detroit and he's going to ask questions and facilitate. Mm -hmm. Elder Michelle, you know how he does as only he can. And we're going to be taking questions from so all of my single friends, everybody single, divorced, looking for somebody. Let's if we I want it to be a mingle service as well. You so know? I got I got guys, uh I'm, I'm texting texting some of my guys <laughs> from the barbershop. Uh they come into so <laughs> hear them, right? Detroit, seven seven one four Grand River. Um it's gonna be some single men there uh that night. Uh and and, and they they looking. 
They, 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 what they say? <laughs> Single, ready to mingle. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, it's going down. Uh, December 1st in Detroit and then January 12th. Then January 12th, we're going to tear it up. I'm so excited. Inviting different couples <laughs> to do different portions and being able to answer questions about how'd you, how'd you do it? How do you marry so long? How do you know when to stick and stay? How do you know when it's worth it and when it's not? And I just, I think these important, these questions are important because I, I remember talking to different family members and friends who, um, for the lack of a better word, are bitter. Um, and what's what's the accent? Uh, Tia said, "What's the accent?" Um, we all, you know, Beyonce. You know her her uh, her mm. alter yeah. her alter ego is Sasha Fierce. You know, mine is like a person from a foreign government, you know, so to speak. So yes. Um, so what I I think it's really important is just instead of we always talking about oh what was that movie with Jennifer Lopez called Marry Me and she kept talking about over and over again how they kept asking her why she keeps getting married and this that and the fourth and he's saying you know fifty percent of marriages end in divorce why would you do that and a line that she said that blessed my whole life was like well there's fifty percent that are making it. And I want to be a part of that number. So, you know, I want to do research. I want to do homework. I don't want to just show up and have a pretty dress and all of that type of stuff. And it, we not be there long. I want to, I want, I'm more interested in the marriage than the actual wedding and event thing. Because we do events all day. So, mm -hmm. um, case in point, we're having more events to prepare for the main event. So it would bless my whole life if we can come together as a family and as the community that you talked mm -hmm. about and how we are our brothers and our sisters keeper. And you help me, I help you. We are inviting uh, married couples, but we're also inviting singles that this can be, you know, a love connection. You met at the uh, why uh, we don't know nothing about marriage, preparing for partnership tour. That's where you met. That's where I your love that. story began. And that would be so awesome for me. Um, I know that'd be awesome for us if that was your connection. And if not, if we don't come back with anything else but the wisdom and the understanding of... Because some things that you learn in a relationship are preparing for marriage you can learn for a sister brother relationship for mm -hmm. church relationships for work relationships these are practical principles of just when you're working and you have to be on teams at work how do I not make you me mm -hmm. because you don't want to have everybody who's the same personality the same mm -hmm. thought process on the same working team because what you are great at if everybody's great at the same thing there are a lot of holes in that so mm -hmm. it's not just important for you know marital partnership but it's also important for life partnerships I agree. one of the things i always like to say um there's a phrase there's a phrases out there that says you know uh i'm i'm one of god's uh favorites now i don't argue with nobody concerning that they say they want a god's favorite but what I like to say is that I'm the grateful child. So <laughs> when, when, when it comes to my relationship with God, uh, what I want God to understand is that I, I am the one that's grateful. And that's kind of how I approach uh, things. I, I mentioned that to say uh, that if you're the person that's, that's grateful, uh, if you're a grateful person in relationship, then that's going to make you an awesome partner because you're always seeing what was given and, and, not, and you're not looking from the vantage point of, what you didn't get when, yeah. when you're grateful you can see the gift that's in every person when, when you are grateful you can see uh the contribution that comes with uh with people so when we were talking about this show called the chosen the chosen it is on netflix it is on all these different um they channels at, they're on that. youtube they're on cw on sundays on sunday evenings i'm sorry no, no. Your Facebook. It is a it is a wonderful show. Uh, if if you want to learn of the Bible and Hi, in a practical uh, way, it is a wonderful show to watch. Uh, it's almost like reading King James. Uh, it's like uh, Thanksgiving when that turkey is just smooth and you can just cut it and succulent all the. It just it is easily digested and to be understood. You can pause it, go back listen to it's it so conversational yeah. and real i think that's the thing that i appreciate more than anything i think whether or not you're a person of faith or if you're not a person of faith you can still value a good relational show 
a mm-hmm. show about a person who cares about other people, who cares about individuals. That if you're at a low place in your life and you need an yeah. answer, you need you are a desperate place because what I love the most is that even if you are in church or even if you have your relationship and you work full-time ministry, um, like I do, you still have a moment where you feel a disconnect. What do you do when you are chosen by God? You are a believer, but you still feel disconnected. How do you get back reconnected? Not it's it's for those who who don't know, but it's also for those who know and can find themselves lost. It's like we've all come short, and we all have a moment in our lives where we feel disconnected, and a season where it's dark early, and a season where a lot of people get depressed during Christmas, Thanksgiving. Because to your point, we're too busy com- comparing what we don't have versus what we do have, and that's why I think The Chosen is a very important show to watch. Please. Whether you you know Jesus, you don't know him, it's still a great show just on content, how they make it. I feel like sometimes when no, I was like, chief, no smoke, right? Um, I love Christian content. I love it. I love the message around it. But I feel like sometimes when I suggest it to people, I have to give like disclaimers saying, yeah, the acting is good right. or the you know camera shots are okay but the message is really good just stay on there for the message i don't have to do that with the chosen camera's good lighting's good mm-hmm. actors are great it is literally Superb. it is amazing and i think everyone should watch it yeah so that's all we just came to suggest something every time we come live again our disclaimer we don't know nothing about uh, marriage, uh, but we are preparing for partnership. So our suggestion for tonight is go and watch uh, The Chosen, season one, season two, season three, and then we want you to meet us in Detroit uh, in just a couple weeks, December 1st at 6.30 p.m., and then we'll be in Jersey on... On January 12th at 6.30 at the East, that's 1406 West Dahlia Avenue, A Harbor City. Please come see us. It's going to be amazing. Also, if you can please put it in the comments, any questions that you want to ask our relationship professionals that we are inviting to the services, anything that you are curious about, or any comments that you think that should be made, or any suggestions that you want to give to us, please put it in the comments. Share with your family and friends, because we are legitimately seeking answers and wanting to make sure that we are on the right path. Caitlin, I'm so excited that you joined me. <laughs> I, I want to get all of your feedback as well. I am just so grateful. Thank you for all the family who joined us tonight. And it was great. Absolutely. So we're going to release you tonight. But as always, this is our perspective on life. Life, you're not my enemy, but life, you are my, my friend. Bitch. No matter what you do tonight, we want you to keep it kind. We love you. We're praying for you. And we will see you next time. <laughs> Good night. Good night.